Is Amazon back knocking on the door to try to get some college football content? The college football expanded playoff content? And if so, does that mean they're back knocking on the Big Ten's door to try to get some Big Ten content? Well, we're going to speculate on that. All on episode 39 of Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. But first, we're going to talk about Matt Brown, his Extra Points newsletter. He wrote a fine article. Uh, I, I agree with most of it. I want to go through it real, real quick. There's a couple points I disagree. Um, but again, it's a fine article. Let's get through it. Um, the title of it is, in my opinion, rooting for bank accounts is boring. I would agree with that. I just don't think any fans do root for bank accounts. Let's get right to the article. Okay, this is Matt Brown against his, uh, again, his newsletter, Extra Points. I know he does a podcast with Brian Fisher. Um, but let's get to the article. Good morning and thanks for spending part of your day with Extra Points. I have to admit this can be a tricky time of year for a guy that writes a newsletter that primarily focus on off the field forces that shape college athletics. It's one thing to have a single-minded focus on TV revenue and institutional alignment in July, but in September, there are football games and soccer games and volleyball games and plenty of stuff actually happening on the field. And all of that off-the-field stuff matters only because so many people care deeply about what happens on the field. And I completely agree with that. Um, it is kind of unusual to be talking about all this off-the-field stuff in September but as we said and peek around the corner to y'all in July, that there's going to be a hot window between August 15th and October 15th uh, when no one else was saying that. So that is the world that we're living in. But I do agree generally with what Matt Brown says in that first paragraph. He, he continues to say, finding the right balance of coverage, especially since this new le letter serves several different constituencies, can be a challenge. After all, I care about those games too. In fact, a significant reason why I care about TV rights or institutional alignment or academic research or any of the other things that I write about in Extra Points is because I think this stuff impacts the actual games. Those trends impact the welfare and happiness of athletes. It impacts the experience fans have at games. It shapes who plays in what league and more. Again, all that is accurate and he writes it a lot better than I could ever do so I think Matt Brown is a, is, a, is a very good writer. He goes on to say, I don't want to be so arrogant as to tell other people how to be a fan. I don't think I'm smart enough to give especially unique and informed media commentary, but do want to briefly mention a guiding principle I try to use when I write about college sports business. It's one I recommend to others, especially fans. Don't root for bank accounts. I agree. I just don't think any of us are. But he continues to say, I don't get a cut of the, any conference's TV deal, and neither do you. I don't get a dividend check of any NIL deal, and my experience as a consumer and honestly as a reporter does not change if another collective raises X amount of money. These stories can be interesting because they might impact something on the field or might impact future decisions from leaders, but most interesting story is generally how those resources are used and shared. Does the money go to the players? Coaches, vendors, scholarships, that's less clear. And then he ends the uh, call, uh, article by saying, rooting for rich people to make even more money doesn't seem particularly fun or rewarding to me personally, but that's just me. Again, I agree with everything Matt Brown basically says in this article. There's just a couple of things that I need to point out. First of all, I don't believe any fan is rooting for bank accounts. I don't think there's any fear of that happening. I think we talk about, us fans, us nobodies, talk about all this off the field stuff just like the way Nash Reporters and Matt Brown talks about it because it, it will affect what happens on the field. I think the fans have realized this. They've seen what's going on. And I hope us, a peek around the corner, has a, just the tiniest fraction to do with that because it does impact. And this part here... I agree with Matt, Matt Brown completely when he says those stories can be interesting because they might impact something on the field or might impact future decisions from leaders, 
But the most interesting story is generally how those resources are used and shared. Does the money go to the players, coaches, vendors, scholarships, and less clear? Well, does the money go to the players? And that's the point I, that's the thing I've been trying to point out. The money will be going to the players. More and more compensation will be going to the players. And the reality is, depending on what conference that student athlete is in, will be largely dependent on how much money compensation that player gets. And that's why all this is so very important. I just want to reiterate something. Texas and Oklahoma is not regretting their decision to go to the SEC, to leave the Big 12 in the SEC. Just because the college football playoffs have expanded, it would be easier to win the Big 12 in the SEC. Oklahoma and Texas are not regretting their decision. USC and UCLA are not regretting their decision to leave the PAC in the Big 10. Big 12, uh, possibly Arizona, Arizona State, whatever, they're not regretting their, uh, their options to potentially move to the Big 12. Big 12 is not regretting your mark is trying to be proactive and grow his confidence nationally looking out west. No one is regretting these decisions. No one is regretting having these options or, or being proactive because the college football world has changed because the money is going to influence what happens on the field more than ever before because of the total deregulation of the sport. The complete deregulation of the sport. Conferences are going to become more powerful. Direct compensation from the conference to the players is going to happen. Think of it this way. Think of Major League Baseball, where there's no salary caps. Small market teams such as Kansas City Royals, Minnesota Twins, Tampa Bay Rays. They can win the World Series. They can get to the playoffs, even being a low-budget team, right? There's no salary cap in Major League Baseball, but their path is so narrow, right? Teams like uh, franchises like the Yankees and the Dodgers, they have a larger margin of error because they have all this money coming in. And these athletic directors these that are in charge of all athletic programs within their institution, they're responsible for all their sponsored sports. Less money they come in. It's not just about football. It's being able to compete in track and field and hockey and wrestling and basketball. Because players are going to be compensated more and more. And therefore, so, so schools like Washington, Oregon, and we tried to explain this in our last episode, still have a great motivation to join the Big Ten. And of course, we do not know if that's going to happen because we do not know if Big Ten is going to get the money from future media companies to make that expansion happen. But they're working towards that possibility. You know, we have got people on Twitter and message boards. They hide behind emojis. They don't give out their real names. They made this big argument a few months ago that the NIL name, image, and likeness is going to change the college football landscape drastically. You remember those arguments? I mean, the difference between five, six, seven million dollars of one institution of, of, of boosters giving out that sort of money to NIL, to recruits, was going to change dramatically to the point where some people were arguing that some schools in the Big Ten were going to leave the Big Ten, some schools in the SEC were going to leave the SEC, and this super conference is going to form by 2025. You remember those people on Twitter arguing all that stuff? They're the same people who are arguing now that $40 million a year difference in media money, that's not a big deal. That's not going to change anything. Oregon and Washington should not try to get to the Big Ten. It's better off they stay in the Pac-12. That $40 million makes no logical sense whatsoever. I happen to believe, I've come to the point where I believe that there are some national college football reporters are not going to completely grasp this new world of college football and college sports until the day that it happens where the Big Ten Conference sends out a check 
to the right guard of Rutgers, and he's going to be making four times the compensation as the right guard of the Florida State Seminoles, as the right guard of the Miami Florida Hurricanes, as the right guard of the North Carolina Tar Heels, as the right guard of the Oregon Ducks, as the right guard of the Washington Huskies. When that happens, people will finally understand the change and the impact of the line. So when your mark is trying to increase the market share, the total market share of college sports for the Big 12 and its institutions, it isn't bluster, it isn't personal, it's business. Same thing with Kevin Warren, same thing with Greg Swanky. And the Phillips Commissioner of ACC could do it, but he's trapped with that grant of rights. He would do the same thing. And Kliakoff is trying to do the same thing. So all this off-field information that we talk about is extremely important because it will impact drastically what happens on the field in just a few years from now. That's why we at Peek Around the Corner, we're giving you a peek around the corner. That's why we're talking about it so much. And we're in this hot window between August 15th and October 15th, right? If you've been following us, you know about this hot window. Let's get to the other um, very interesting comment from John Oran. I probably am not saying his name uh, correctly. Uh, that's my bad. Um, as you all know, I'm horrible with names and pronunciations. So let's get to... Uh, I'm not going to have this on audio, of course, but you might want to um, check in uh, on Apple, Spotify, or Google what SBJ John Oran says about Amazon. I'll just read you the tweet real quick here. It says, with plans to expand the college football playoffs in place, Amazon now has another chance to pick up sports rights. And I'll just give you just a tiny synopsis of what John Oran says about this from SBJ Sports Business Journal. He's basically saying he anticipates Amazon to be extremely aggressive. To be extremely aggressive in going after part of the college football playoffs content. You remember, we're going from three college football playoff games to 11 when the Playoffs get expanded. And that could happen in 2024, 2025, or or at least by 2026, this expanded playoffs. And what SBJ is saying is they anticipate Amazon to be real aggressive. They were real aggressive in trying to get Big Ten rights. They, They offered more money than what sounds like that CBS and NBC did. But BTN, uh, I'm sorry, Big Ten Kevin Warren decided on the great exposure that NBC and CBS get, and you can understand Kevin Warren's decision. My speculation, no intel, just speculation, is if Amazon is make is going to make this aggressive play to try to get a game or two, a slice of the new expanded college football playoffs as SBJ is reporting. Don't you think it would help Amazon to grab a slice of college football content as in Big 12, Ace, uh, I'm sorry, Big 12, Pac-12, and Big 10? Another expansion of the Big 10? I mean, do you really think that Amazon would be granted rights, no matter how much they offered, to showcase a playoff game or two in the new expanded playoffs if they didn't have any rights to any of the conferences? I find that hard to believe. I really do find that hard to believe. So what I'm thinking, what I'm speculating, and please, before we go on, please leave your comments in the comments section below the video and let me know what you think about this, about this Amazon play to get college football playoff content. And please, if you like this video, hit the like button, Please subscribe to our channel. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers. We thank you so much. And please share the video with your family and friends. We appreciate it so much. How would... It would seem to me that Amazon's best play is to try to get a a conference content, right? 
Big 12 is now talking with ESPN and Fox. They were able to get speed up their uh, exclusive rights with both those, uh, their current media partners. PAC is, is, in an exclu- is, is an exclusive window or was an exclusive window with ESPN. It doesn't sound like Amazon has any interest in dealing with PAC's Tier 1 and two, Tier 2 content. So basically, it's between the Big Ten and the Big 12. Well, we know Amazon went hard for Big Ten content in this last negotiations. I guess after reading this, after listening to John Oran, my speculation is maybe Amazon goes hard again for Big Ten content. You know, we talked about how when this initial media Big Ten contract was announced, we were going to first look at how much streaming content is in that whole deal. And there's not much. There really isn't that much for football. I think there's eight games in total with Peacock running four games, non-conference games, four conference games. And if there was going to be more expansion in the Big Ten in this go-around, it'd probably come out of the streaming space. And if Amazon is going to be so aggressive to try to get playoff content, I would think, speculation only, that they would knock on the Big Ten's door again And if those numbers come in big enough, will Kevin Warren and the presidents decide to expand with a 17th and 18th school? What do you think? Please leave your comments again below the video. I read them all. Interesting times ahead. Interesting times ahead in this hot window. The PAC conference is trying to negotiate a deal with ESPN decent enough to where they can showcase it in front of their 10 current schools. Big 12, your mark is dealing with ESPN and Fox, getting some solid projections. And in them, in those projections would be the inclusion of one or four of those Pac-12 corner schools. It's all happening right now. Decisions are being made. Stay with us. Buckle up. Brace for impact. Until next time. All of us that peek around the corner, to all of you, please, you all take care of each other. Thank you so very much.